Hello, everyone. It is time for this week's version of How's It Going? Let me share my screen now. How's it going? Um, so every week I've been recording, or at least I try every week, um, to record a video uh, for you all. Since not all of us get to see each other at the same time, a lot of you I've never actually met in person. Um, so for this session, we'll be going over a couple things and let's see what we're gonna look at. Um, for this episode, we're gonna go over some important dates uh, for the month of October. Um, I'll mention 40 Minute Fridays. A couple of y'all joined me today and that was kind of fun. Um, I'll go over some student feedback uh, in which I uh, address some of your um, feedback that you gave me in your most recent test. And then I'll go over some uh, student work and highlights. As you see here, we've got an animation. This is by Austin in my Animation 2 class uh, that he posted in his project. All right, so we're almost done with the first nine weeks. Um, let's look at the calendar here. So here's October. Um, so Monday, uh, we will not have school at all. I will not be checking my email. I will not check Canvas. Hopefully you don't have to check Canvas. Um, oh, the bell's ringing. Um, but Mondays um, on the 12th, no school. Uh, you'll notice the rest of the week is kind of normal. So you'll, you'll still follow the same pattern. You just have one less A day, right? Um, on the 16th, so next Friday, um, this is when I'm asking you as a favor to turn in any late work or improved work. So as I mentioned in my last video and in class, um, I'm always welcome to check um, to take your late work and any corrections you want to make. You just have to make it by that date, if possible. Because on the 22nd, which is the Thursday after that, the last Thursday, is it the last Thursday of the month? No, it's not. But it's the last Thursday that's seen here. Um, I have to post grades for the first nine weeks by noon. So that's an actual date and time that's given to me that's non-negotiable. So if you can turn in stuff by the 16th, that gives me time to grade. Of course, if something terrible happens or you're just overwhelmed and it's taking you a little bit, just tell me what you're working on and say uh, maybe you can get it on the 19th or 20th. Um, I'll work with you, but you got to start talking to me um, to let me know that you're actually working on it. I also put on this uh, screen that October 20th through 22nd is Adobe Max. Um, that is a free conference held by Adobe, the actual company Adobe uh, that made Photoshop and made Animate and all that. There's a whole bunch of really cool sessions that are going to go on with some very popular people. Um, we're going to talk about that more later. I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up that that's coming up. Okay, um, so back to my slide. Um, so 40 Minute Fridays, a lot of you um, in the test said you would or maybe would join a video session with me on Fridays. Uh, we had our first couple ones today. A couple people joined. Um, usually how it goes is I ask you if you have any questions. If you do, we'll go over those. Um, I show you some student work. So recently, y'all turned in a project. Uh, some people are still working on those, so we kind of looked at some um, people who had turned those in. And we'll look at some later in this video. So if you missed out on the, uh, today's 40 Minute Friday sessions, um, keep watching and we'll watch um, some, we'll look at some projects together. Um, so these will change as far as like what I'll be doing. Um, there definitely was one corgi pic on the morning one that I posted. There was a cat in the second one um, that was not my cat, but um, maybe we can play some games sometimes. I don't know what games we can play that's not blocked at, uh, at school, but maybe we can try sometime. Uh, but it's organic the way that 40 Minute Fridays work. It just kind of depends on who shows up and what y'all want to do. All right, so on the test, a lot of the questions were just about how you feel about this class. Um, so your important, uh, your input's very important to me. Uh, this is the first time I've ever taught in a pandemic, first time you've ever learned in pandemic. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm giving you what you need, right? So a question I ask all my classes um, was what you think about the difficulty level of the class so far. You'll notice animation one's different than animation two. Um, we've all been doing the same things right now. So animation two students are gonna feel like, yeah, you've learned this before, but I wanted to make sure we review it because um, you know, we went to spring break and we never came back. So there's a lot of things that happened between now and then that I wanna make sure you remembered. So that's why we've been reviewing a lot of things in animation two. Um, so for the most part, it looks like um, we're going at a pace that's comfortable to y'all, right? Handful of you think uh, you wanna be challenged more, that's great. Um, and then just like the tiniest, tiniest handful of y'all think uh, the class is too difficult. 
Um, if you think that class is too difficult, um, my advice to you is to reach out to me and let me know specifically what you're um, struggling with and I'll see if I can help you out. Um, if this class is just not what you think it would be, you might want to talk to your school counselor to see if there's any way you can shift to a different class. Um, so that's up to you. You know, you get the choice, hopefully, um, on what you want to do about that. But again, I'm here to help you out. You just have to kind of reach out and, and ask me for help. All right. Next question I asked y'all was, what do you think about how much time I give you for your assignments? Because um, I know all the teachers are different and we're all expecting different things from you. Um, for me, we're, we're living in a very strange time where things are very stressful, right? There's a dangerous thing going around. Uh, so um, your mind may be elsewhere. Um, you may have to take care of your family. Um, you're having to learn online and maybe you don't have the, the space set up for that. So I've been trying to give you more time than I normally would. Um, normally I'm, we learn at a faster pace, but because everybody has different circumstances during this time, uh, I've slowed things down a bit. So it looks like I'm giving y'all a reasonable amount of time to work on assignments. Um, just the tiniest handful of y'all think that there's not enough time or that we get too much time. So uh, based on the majority, I'll still be pacing things the same way as I have. Okay, um, so I wanted to know um, some things that your other teachers are doing that maybe you'd like to do in this class that may be helpful. Um, so these are actually copied and pasted from the test and I kind of grouped them by um, similar topics, right? So here, um, somebody asked if we could do an attendance question every day um, or having some kind of quiz to mark yourself present. Uh, let me tell you that we as teachers have been told to, um, that you as a student has, have to show us learning progress in order for us to count you present. So that's why I don't have a Google form in which you can just say, I'm here. Um, I want you to tell me more than that. Um, that's to show me that you're not just like stepping into my classroom and stepping back out. Um, in the announcements, which I'll go ahead and pull it up, um, I am generally good about giving you an attendance check when I anticipate nothing being uh, completely done that day. So a lot of times if I think you're done early or many of you are done late or whatnot, if there's nothing specifically due on that time, I'm gonna give you an attendance check. So this is the screen you should see when you log into my class, right? I always refer to my tiny heads. So important, these tiny heads. So for attendance, I do have a place where you can check attendance and attendance check should not take more than 10 minutes max. So let's look at today's for animation two class. Um, so I give you a list of things you can do to make sure you're counted present. You don't have to do all of them, of course. You just do at least one of them and you'll be counted present. Um, so today's um, attendance check, if you hadn't done anything, if you hadn't submitted anything, uh, the last thing was just to reply to the announcement um, with a prompt from hashtag Anantober. So really, that only took like five minutes, maybe, for you to find the list uh, and pick a word and reply with the word, right? So that was today's attendance check. So they're going to be pretty quick. So I just ask that you reply to these and not just send me an email that says here, because um, that doesn't really prove you're learning anything that day or working on anything that day. Um, okay, so going back to this list, um, somebody asked for announcements saying what is due that day instead of just telling y'all to look at the modules. And I agree, like, I never just want you to be like, okay, figure out what's new in the modules, right? So in the attendance, um, or in the announcements, you'll see um, things that say week something, week seven, right? We're in week seven. This could be. So if you click on this, you can see that I've kind of written out everything that to expect that day. And what I, um, if you are on pace, then whatever that chunk is, is what you should do, right? So today, um, had my 40 minute Friday, you had hashtag Anamtober week uh, one do, and then uh, tennis check. So there's a couple of different things you could do that day. So I will post these every week. Sometimes I may not have all the information spelled out and I may say I'll update it later. So you see here, I updated this one this morning, or I should say Friday, not Wednesday, but I updated it this morning. Um, so I'll update it as I go and if I need to fill anything out. All right. Um, and then this one was an interesting uh, comment at the bottom. It says one of my teachers sets out work for the next few days. And then at the end of the assignments, they put a stop sign assignment, uh, which basically means you're done with the work for the time being. Um, 
I would hope that this is kind of like it, this week agenda. I don't really um, know about having a stop sign assignment um, because my attendance checks should still be a way for you to prove that you, you've attended class today. So we'll just continue doing um, those things for attendance. Um, let's see. Here's a, it's a slide from last time where I just asked for you to check for my tiny heads. Uh, okay. Another thing that uh, y'all said was that y'all wanted some video tutorials. So uh, that's great that your teachers are making YouTube videos. Um, there's so many different apps we're using. Um, I haven't quite figured out how to make a YouTube video or video tutorial um, that would help out all of y'all at the same time. Um, so usually what I have been doing is just like showing you so that you could go back and improve on what you're doing. Um, hopefully in, in the future, if there's something that all of us are doing at the same time, I can provide a video tutorial. Um, but for now, I'll just, it's faster for me to find or for you to find uh, tutorials on how to do it on YouTube. Um, so if you're using Piskel, you can go and search on YouTube for Piskel tutorials, or if you don't want to use Piskel, and maybe you're using Brush Ninja, like Googling Brush Ninja. So you'll find that um, in this class, we're, we're always doing different things. We're all, always making different things. So it's hard for me to do like a one fits all video tutorial. Ah, nobody thinks I'm here. Okay, there we go. Um, I do like this, um, this comment at the, at the bottom, this random idea. If I post an assignment that people might not f fully understand, or have a discussion and answer questions people um, who didn't attend may also have, um, have the more important points and questions in the assignment descriptions. Um, so I think that's, that's a great uh, suggestion. Um, so I may in the future um, start adding things to assignments. If um, a question keeps coming up, maybe I'll add something to that page, that assignment page to, to let you know there's like a frequently asked question about that. So thanks for that. Uh, somebody said maybe do a remind, uh, and I actually do have a remind. Uh, on the left-hand side, you've got ATC Anim 1. That's the code for Animation 1 students, and then Anim 2 for my Animation 2 students. Um, if you ever want to know that, it's going to be on my the course homepage next to my face, my bigger face. Uh, you got the codes right here on what you can text. Um, I don't have a lot of people signed up to that, so I don't send out a lot of reminders. But if more people sign up, uh, that will help me remember to send out more reminders. But I usually try to send re reminders um, a couple times a week. Okay. Um, so someone says that looking at modules, you can't tell which are assignments or have been completed. And one of their teachers uses the mark is done button. So you can tell if you're caught up. So let me show you a trick in Canvas, because a lot of you, this is the first time you ever use Canvas, right? So I'm in student view. Uh, you can tell at the bottom of, of the screen, I'm logged in like a, like a student. So I'm seeing what you're seeing. So there's two ways you can check to see if you've done something or if you need to catch up or whatnot. One way is clicking on modules. And you can see here, there's little check marks, right? They're all green. That means I've done it, right? Down here, you can see me as a student. Uh, there's a couple things I didn't finish or I didn't quite meet. And you can tell here the way I've set up these modules that you have to do a certain thing for it to turn green. So here I have to score a 100, which was a completion grade. So I have to complete this assignment for this to turn green. Uh, you can also see here, there's the, the, the deadline, uh, how many points it's worth, and again, what you need to do for this to turn green. So that's one way that you can see, um, just at a glance to see what you need to do uh, to catch up. Another way is to click on your grades, and you can see here a little bit more details. So you can see if you turned in something late or if it's missing. Um, this dash either means you have not done it or have not graded it. And something I pointed out in the last video, but I'll point it out again because it's really important. Um, if you ever see this icon here, it's two thought bubbles next to each other. It's kind of small, but if you click on it, you can see the comments that I leave, right? And that you leave. So, well, I don't know if you can see what you've left, but you can definitely see mine. So you can see here that uh, me as a teacher commented on this assignment to this as me a student, hey, you forgot the comments. So anytime I leave you a comment, go ahead and check it out. Sometimes it'll be like, hey, you did a good job here, or hey, can you fix this? 
So anytime I say, hey, can you fix this? Go ahead and fix it and resubmit it, and I will be happy to regrade it. So those are different ways you can check to see if you're all caught up, if you're missing anything. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about Animation 1 students. Um, I asked Animation 1 students, what else do you wanna to learn this semester? Uh, one of them, a lot of y'all said Adobe Animate. Uh, that's usually what we start out with if everybody was here. So we have to think about uh, what students have access to, right? Unfortunately, not everybody has the computer, um, has a computer at home or has a computer that can run Adobe Animate. Like Adobe Animate doesn't run on Chromebooks, sadly. Uh, so that's why we've been spending a lot of time in browser apps. If somebody says they wanna try out 3D animation. We actually don't do that until the second year. Uh, like if you sign up for animation two, that's when we start talking about that. But even then, um, I can't do 3D animation with my second year students yet because we all have to stick with like web-based apps or apps that I know that everybody can have access to. So I hope we can do Adobe Animate one day. They're working on ways for y'all to access a thing where everybody could access Adobe Animate. But for the time being, I can't specifically teach uh, anything about Adobe Animate. Um, I do encourage you to check out YouTube tutorials um, if you do want to go ahead and get a head start on how to use Adobe Animate. All right, next batch of, batch of questions. Um, a lot of you said you wanted to do a music video um, or choreography or sync up your audio with your um, videos. Um, I do want to show you, we have a YouTube channel. I don't know if you've seen our YouTube channel. I'll put that in the canvas in, ca in case you want to ever check it out. Um, I do have a playlist called Bongo Cat that you may have fun watching um, so that we did do and we hopefully will do um, syncing audio with your animations. But again, we had to do, uh, do all that in Adobe Animate. And since we don't have access to that right now, um, we're unable to do that. But I want to. I've heard you and I want to, and hopefully we will in the future. All right. So here, I'm going to make the screen bigger. What else do you want to learn this semester? Animation one students. Um, a lot of y'all just want to get smoother animations. Um, we've been doing a lot of frame by frame work and I haven't really told you about onion skins and other tips and tricks to make sure your animation is a lot smoother. So we're actually going to cover that pretty soon so that you can, you can get smoother, uh, more consistent animations. All right, now we're switching to animation two students. You mean our second year students. Um, second year students, uh, I know you want to do 3D modeling and animation, and I know that I told you we would this year, but I did not anticipate a pandemic happening and still happening. Um, I know Blender is cool and free, but not everybody has a computer. Um, not everybody has a computer that can run Blender. So right now, um, I can't make that like an assignment. So hopefully in the future we can. In the meantime, if you want to learn, um, YouTube has so many tutorials that you can uh, hop on if you'd like to get a head start on that. Then I hear a bunch of like answers that all basically say the same thing, that y'all wanna do longer animations. Um, so we may start doing that. Um, we may start building our way up into that. We've been talking about character design, right? So we will eventually lead up to there. Um, I was kind of hoping that we would all have access to Adobe Animate sooner, but it may be later that that is a guaranteed thing. So we may do longer animations, um, but it may be like more of a trailer at first. I do like this idea of a trailer. So don't worry, we're not just gonna do animated, short animated GIFs for the rest of the semester. Uh, we will eventually build up into storytelling. It's just gonna not look exactly like it did last year. Um, I like these ideas. Um, on the left hand side, some people said stop motion, which I think would be a fun exercise uh, since most of, it, most of us have cameras. Uh, and then on the right hand side, somebody um, said they wanted to do a Halloween theme assignment. We're doing hashtag Animtober, so there's a lot of spooky words there, but I, maybe, maybe we'll do a Halloween thing. We'll see. Animation one student said, one animation one student said that too, so maybe you can sneak one in there before uh, Halloween. All right, uh, student work and highlights. Um, I'm only gonna talk about uh, the project. Uh, most of you have finished this and some of you have not. 
either way, I wanted you to see um, some examples that I think are pretty solid as far as what I asked for. So that if you were watching this and you're like, oops, I didn't do this, um, go ahead and go back and correct it and then resubmit your work if you want me to regret it, regrade it. Um, the trick is to make sure you hit resubmit or else I have no idea that you did any improvements. Um, so the, the main gist of this project was to create one character and then make that one character uh, an example for four different animation principles. So let's take a look. Uh, the first couple of uh, presentations I'm going to show you are from the Animation 1 students. And again, like I said, um, Animation 1 and Animation 2 students have been doing the same exact thing um, for right now. Um, so this project was like basically the last thing that we'll be doing at the same time, maybe. So here is Look What I Can Do by Hannah. Uh, what I liked about Hannah's is this uh, cover, this title screen has their little character on it. And let me actually see if I can pull up. Oh, I cannot pull up this and nope, I cannot. Okay, so let me <laughs> let me pull up this animation. I thought it was linked, it was not linked. How are y'all doing today? You look great. You look great today. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> All right. Hannah's. Because I do want to show the rest of Hannah's presentation. Here we go. So appeal. Um, Hannah did a great job of um, achieving hierarchy, which we actually haven't talked about animation one students. Um, that means like making things bigger that should be more important. So appeal is bigger than the descriptions. Uh, and then the character, the actual animation, takes up a majority of the screen because that's also important, probably more important than the words, right? So I like that, that visual hierarchy there. Also, very appealing character. Does look like it wants to be my friend. Is exaggeration. Pretty great. Great munch. Peel. And then squash and stretch. Squash and stretch is hard to do, so it's, it's been good to see that a lot of y'all are getting the hang of that. All right, let's go to the next example, uh, which is Kate's. I like uh, the choice of colors that Kate chose, like overall, very soft, um, cool tones uh, to match the character here. I also like the little design elements that um, kind of add to the slide, but don't distract from the words or the animation. Um, Kate also used an app called Pencil2D. That's not a, an app that I have taught, but since Kate feels comfortable using it, she's welcome to use it for this assignment. It's a pretty great version of exaggeration. I feel like if you do exaggeration correctly, you should get like a smile or a laugh from people. So I love the way this character just totally totally passes out or falls from seeing a mouse. Here's arcs, very subtle, but you can tell any way a, a body moves is moving in an arc, but I do appreciate that Kate told me specifically uh, what's moving in an arc. So here you can see the, the arm is moving in an arc. And then squash and stretch. All right, let's keep going. Okay, I'm also going to have to pull this one up. All right, so Caleb here made this uh, character called Dreamer. Uh, Dreamer seems simple. It's a black and white character, but what I could tell is that um, Caleb put some effort into the, the hair or the flames. Not sure what they are, but it's pretty cool the way they're moving. And also a little toe tapping. Like, Caleb didn't have to do that, but he went ahead and put the little toe tapping down. So, uh, and I do agree that uh, even though there's a lot to look at, but uh, Dreamer's pretty entertaining in these next couple slides. So here's the exaggeration of falling and flapping the arms very wildly. It's pretty fun. All 
Here we go with an arc. I do like how uh, little words pop up. Uh oh. And then squash and stretch. Poor Dreamer. I kind of hope I see Dreamer again in a future assignment. It's pretty pretty fun shenanigans that Dreamer gets into. All right, um, let's see here. So appeal. All right, I got this is going to be our animation two students. And let me pull up um, pull up their stuff. Uh, Mia has made a very adorable little bee. Um, so I love the soft colors, the pastel colors, so that the bee is not seen as aggressive um, as sometimes we feel like bees may be uh, in little chubby cheeks to, to also make the bee come across as, across as innocent. Here's exaggeration. The bee spying some uh, some food, and specifically, if you can see the H changing colors, I believe that signifies honey, uh, which this bee is bananas about. Here we've got arcs. Again, this is you know animation class, so I wanted to see an animated example. So even if it's just a simple little movement, this bee is just waving hi, moving an arc. And then lastly, squash and stretch, which is a really fun example because there's so many details in the. Uh, and the rows. So, great job. Okay, we've got another one that I've got to pull up. So, Jeb made a character called Jeff. Uh, Jeff is a, just a normal Joe, which is funny because his name is not Joe, it's just Jeff. Um, so we've got here <clears throat> this character made in Brush Ninja. It's a lot like Dreamer, right? Seems simple, but I can tell there's a lot of effort uh, put into the details here. So I like the way Jeff here is just winking. So exaggeration, this one made me laugh just about how like the progression of this normal to fear face is. Uh, and how exaggerated the fear face is with all the wrinkles and the giant eyes and the giant pupils and the mouth getting larger, um, the more fear sets in. Very relatable character. Got Jeff waving. He just wants to say hi. And lastly, squash and stretch, which I love this looping animation of, and this idea that maybe Jeff keeps getting hit by a bouncy ball. But look at how stretchy Jeff's head is. <laughs> All right, let's see. Last one um, is going to be Carrie's. So let me pull up Carrie's uh, work. I totally closed out of what I needed. Give me one times two seconds. Carrie's. All right. Uh, Carries I use as an example on class a lot because of the way uh, Carries design eye came out here. Um, there's some little design elements that Carrie added into her presentation that I thought really complemented the animation uh, more than it distracted. So, which is always a good sign of design. So, again, these little flowers to the side, which matches the feel of the character named Gracie. So, Gracie is a very adorable character with big eyes, because people love cute things and big eyes, most people anyways. Um, so we're having Gracie stretch out a little bit. Um, Carrie got fancy and used both Brush Ninja and Photoshop um, to make this one animation. It's exaggeration. Um, I love how um, not only does Gracie jump, but also there's squash and stretch happening, right? If you watch the eyeballs get like very large, and the face get large whenever like Gracie gets spooked. It's very fun. I also like the second character. That's a that's a bonus difficulty level there. Here's arcs. 
Gracie thinking I think she should fly away. She's also a big chicken. I don't know how Gracie got up in, up there, but she goes. And then last we squash and stretch. So it's really funny to watch Gracie sneak that worm away. And also the face of uh, the other character, like kind of like, who took my worm? So lots of good squash and stretch in this example. So really great. Uh, Really great job as far as your projects go. Um, so let's finish this up with hashtag Animtober. So here's the full list. Uh, today is the ninth. So maybe some of you are drawing a pig and so maybe some of you do not want to draw a pig. Remember, uh, you don't have to follow the dates if you don't want to. So if you want to see the full list, it's in Canvas and it's also um, on Instagram and Twitter. Here's day number two. We've got two different animations, uh, one by Animation One student, Lauren, uh, who made the, uh, the GIF on the left, and then Ruben made the GIF on the right. So a lot of Among Us fans, which I still have not played, but I hope to one day. Um, I wish there was a way for me to host a game at school, but I haven't figured that out yet. Here we have day three is Mighty. So uh, one example on the left, that's from Trevor in Animation 1 class and another one from uh, Animation 2 student, uh, Zach. So these are not animated and that's fine because I just said the purpose of this is to um, just exercise your brain. So always pick a word that interests you, always pick a, a medium that interests you, pick a style that you're interested in. I never want you to be bored doing this. This is to help you um, exercise um, your creativity. All right, you've reached the, the end of this. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, I usually try to get back to you within one school day. Um, and then sometimes you ask a question that other people may have and just not remembering to ask me. So um, thanks for all your input and thanks for all your effort. I'll see y'all sometime.